Hey, welcome to Crazy Gamers Games and Model Making. Today we're going to look at some um these true metal paints from AK. I got um steel and brass. That's the only two I guys wanted to try them. I didn't, you know. I don't know a lot about these. So, I know they're wax based and then you can brush them on um the metal and then polish it with a cloth. I think you can even apply it with a little cloth or a Q-tip or cotton bud. Um, but this is the brass. Let's see if we can just take a look at it. If you can see it on the cap there, it's, you know it's a nice color. And um, they say you put it just right over a primer coat, and you can polish it up. And I'm, as you know, I'm doing a um, build along coming up. I haven't picked the kit yet. Um, but it's probably going to be, you know, a King Tiger or a Panther, and they're going to have shell casings and ammunition. So I figured the um, the brass would be good for the shell casings, and then I got the steel for, you know, different parts of the breech, just different things that would be steel on a um, on a model. Um, I might even do these idler wheels for the Berg Panther um, in the steel and um, possibly these sprockets and not um, you know around the teeth do steel where they would get worn paint them um, the the base color and weather them and then do or put the steel and then weather it around the teeth and see how that looks like same thing um, on the on the idler wheel up in this area right here so I got these two um, I got a gunmetal one I might do on the gun barrel in case like the paint wore off in certain areas. I might do that also for the breach of the machine guns and things like that. Um, that's the only two I have so far, but I want the gun barrel metal one. Um, also, um, for painting my German tanks, I really only have the three colors. I have the, the Panzer... Um, gray surface primer then I have the German red brown and then I have a German um, green brown which is the the base color before it was weathered on on this um, lower half of this um, panther birds panther so I got me some Vallejo German colors, 1940 to 1945. Um, they are the Vallejo Model Air. So I can airbrush them on or I can um, brush them on. I've, I've brushed the air paints. They have no problem. So let's see what colors we get. I haven't opened these yet. I can do this without cutting myself because that would be a fun video. I would leave it in there because... I really don't edit my videos, they're pretty much raw videos. So we got a color chart. And let's see, the first one is we got a sand, I'll put it in camera, sand ivory. So that, you know, we can touch some detail on the inside on that one. We got the Panzer dark gray. So then we have a dark yellow. And then we have a armor brown. That's probably going to be like that red brown. Maybe be better for the interior of the next one. Uh, we got a medium olive. And then we have a dark green camo, dark green. So you can see. And then we have a oh, German red brown, so this is the same as a surface primer. This must be more like a rusty armor brown. We'll take, maybe take a look at that one. Let's see what that one looks like. And then we have the gray white. This would be like the interior color on like the Panthers. It's supposed to be like a cream, but I think this gray white would work. Um, I think this red brown and this armor brown would be good. So I think this is going to be a good kit for um, painting up the um, the next tank and the build along. And of course we got a color color guide here that's just basically 
all the colors. Wow, they have a lot of colors. I wonder if that's just the model airline. No, it shows you all of them. The model, model color and model air color. Game air and stuff like that. So that's um, this. Let me just... I'm going to keep it in the box so I can just pull it because i got some other stuff to show you on the on the paint front. Um, i got a couple uh, people seem to like when I was painting on my tank. And I normally don't do that. That's a, that's a first. So I... Figured I'd get a few paints that, you know, match the back out a little bit there. And then I also, for that Typhoon build that's going to be coming up, and the Hellcat, because they are British, or not the Hellcat, the, the Typhoon, that's what it is. I got um, some RAF Royal Air Force Colors Day Fighters. 1941 to 1945 and PRU. I don't know what PRU is, but um, let's see what we got in here. Let's see here. That's kind of already peeling off there. So let's see what we got. Now, I believe I can paint the Typhoon with just this box, but I have some other colors. Um, that I can do. Let's see what we got here. Let's put the box up there. We got a ocean gray. Take a look what's in there. Ocean gray. These are looks like their model air too. It didn't say. Oh, it does say on their model air. Um, then there's a BS dark green. I want to say that's a British dark green, maybe. Um, then we got a BS medium sea gray. That would be like a nice interior color or like the outside camo. Then we got a Sky Type S. Now I definitely think this is for the inside. Um, I've seen people talking about the um, Sky color on the inside of like cockpits and in the back area of the planes. And then we have a Faded PRU Blue, which is a, just a blue-gray. Then we have a PRU pink. So I'm not sure about that one. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about the pink, what that would be used for. Um, then we got just black. It's weird to include a black in there when most people would probably already have black. And then a white. Insignia white. Okay, so I guess if you want to... Oh, that would be for the black and white invasion stripes. That's why it's in here. So you could basically paint the whole outside of, of like, a Typhoon. Uh, I know this isn't a Typhoon. I think that may be a Spitfire. I'm not sure. Um, but that is that. And then, let's see if I can put these back in here quickly. Because I have a couple more paints to show you. These, um, these are all on clearance at my hobby store. Um, we'll take a look at the historical color selection. Oh, this one's got pictures. Okay, so... Okay, the list of colors of the aircraft in the different years. We got the duck egg blue. I've seen that before. The sky blue. Okay, and here's all the um, camouflage schemes of all the different um, British planes. That's cool. I'll hold on to that. I'll never be able to fold it. Oh, no, wait. Can I fold it? I did it. I folded it back to normal. That never happens with the real map. And then I got this right here. This is um, Allied Forces in World War One, World War Two. I'm sorry, um, model color. Um, these are not airbrush paints, and I, I, I'm aware of that, and I didn't want airbrush paints. I wanted a paint that I could brush on, and it is thinnable to do airbrush. So I just got these, um, again, on clearance. We got a pale sand. It's a nice cream color. 
medium flesh tone, a gun metal gray, U.S. field drab, tan earth, this is part of their Panzer series. Then we have a olive brown. Let me come in a little bit more for these colors here. Then we have an intermediate green. And then we have a U.S. dark green. This is Allied Forces, so I'm assuming some of these can be used on the British planes. So we have a olive green, a camo olive green. Then we have a gunship green, a English uniform, sorry about the beep, uniform green, Russian uniform World War II, I don't know why, no allied, I think they were part of the allies. And then we have just a model color black, um, white, and khaki, which um, I'm already seeing some good combinations where I could mix these mix these colors with different um mix them together like I can mix the white and the khaki to get a different kind of cream than the pale sand or add a little bit of this medium flesh tone which has like a orangey brown to it to some white to get a cream color for different shades of cream in the interior and we get another color book and then um Put this back here and then I'll show you one more thing. I want to keep them together just until I get them on a rack or something. I don't have a lot of Vallejo paint. I normally use pot paints that are in pots, but um, I, I do enjoy the Vallejo surface primers. I know a lot of people don't like them, uh, but if you give them adamant time to cure, like I know three days is a long time to wait to sand your model, but after three days it, it it really hardens up and you can work with it um, you know with me I, I I don't have that problem I can wait it's fine I just work on another project or something but this is Allied Forces World War II it's 70.109 70 70.109 and this is just the model color and that's the that's the the box number here um, just basically the box color so, and then we have one more that, this one is USAAF World War II. Um, this is code 71185. And these are what looks to be what was in the last box. But as you see, the box is damaged because it was, again, I'm going to go on the clearance. Um, and this was the cheapest of them all and for the price of it I just couldn't I, and I'm really not painting anything that is US World War II US Air Force but it's got it's got like a US dark green in it um, the first color was white we know what white looks like and then it has a middle stone and then we have a olive drab well that olive drab doesn't even look greenish I thought olive drab was like a green tone that looks brown could be wrong and we got a medium sea gray and then we got of course black tons of black now a signal blue take a look at that and then we got a base gray. Um, then we have a regular gray. That doesn't look bad. And then we got a UK Azora. I think this is going to be like a blue. So this does have some ally, some British colors in it. It's not a bad, like a sky blue. Paint some gauges or you know, handles and a cockpit. Um, 124th scale is pretty big, so there's a lot of detail to pick out in different colors for contrast. This one is U.S. light green, and it definitely needs to be mixed, as you could probably see. 
it definitely needs to be mixed up. I'll put that in the paint shaker. And then we have a U.S. Field Drab. And we have U.S. Desert Sand. Uh, it's like a pale, like a little bit of red, like a, like a pale sand with a smidge of red in it to warm it up. And then, oh, we got a satin varnish. This is the first one that has varnish in it. What do we got here? Oh, a decal medium, alcohol-based. Decal softener. Oh, and decal fix. I've wanted to try these from Vallejo, but I, I've just never seen them anywhere. I've always used the Microcell, Microset, Microsol, Microset, and I was like, oh, I see Vallejo has them, but I never found them anywhere. And look at that, they were in this in this set on um, this USAAF World War II colors 71185. It was just laying in the back of the paint area of my model stock shop. It was damaged, dirt cheap. Um and wow, it's I like some of the colors. I like like this medium sea gray I like. Um, the base gray, I like this, but to get the decal medium and some varnish, um, I'm real happy about this. This is probably the best set, even though it's not, you know, what I was looking for color-wise. I just um, noticed that because when I when I got this, these three bottles were turned like that, so I wasn't really able to see um, what these two bottles were, so I wasn't sure what was in there I could have opened it but for the price it was like eh, you know, it's paint people always buy paint I have so much paint I don't know what to do with all the paint it's insane so we looked at so that's it for this uh, it's already gone on 17 minutes on paint um, I'll be doing some demonstrations and showing a lot of these colors and when I when I put them on a tank or a plane, I'll tell you what kit I got it from, and then you can refer back, and you know I'll tell you what color and what box I bought it from, and I'll let you know how useful the boxes even were, because you know they may not come in, and then we'll look at that decal solution when it comes to that. Well, for crazy gamers, games and model making, you guys have a great day.